We're now going to turn our attention to another very classic gang of four pattern, the so-called command pattern. And we're going to start off, as always, by showing how the command pattern can be applied to perform user-requested commands consistently and extensively in the context of our expression tree processing app. And of course, I'll give you plenty of other known uses later. Don't, don't think that these patterns are by any means limited to one use case or one domain. So we're going to use the command pattern to objectify actions that will enable users to perform command requests consistently and extensively in the context of our expression tree case study. And you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different commands we're going to be looking at. And command gives us a uniform way to process all these things, you basically uh, implementing the so-called principle of least surprise, where you don't have to make changes uh, in your expectations in order to use the features. Now, specifically, where are we going to use this? Well, it turns out that there's a mode called verbose mode, and that supports execution of user commands. And what you do is you, you basically have kind of a command line interface, and you can type in or click in, if you're using the GUI version, you can click or type in the various commands that you want to give. So, for example, here we can say, I want to have the input format be in order. And then it'll prompt you and say, what would you like to do next? Well, next thing we can do is we can give the expression that we want to process. So we can say expr for expression minus five times three plus four. And then it'll come back and say, what would you like to do next? Would you like to print? Would you like to evaluate? What would you like to do? And so it'll, it'll prompt us and give us a chance to, to change how things work. Now, that's verbose mode. And that in that case, you have to type in a bunch of commands. Then there's also something called succinct mode, and that supports basically what's called a macro command. And with succinct mode, it's basically like a command line calculator interface where you're prompted and you type in your expression like minus five times three plus four, and then it goes ahead and does the computation. So it actually bundles together a bunch of other commands. It bundles together format, which in this case would be in order. It bundles the expert command, in this case, the expression you type in. And then it also goes ahead and does and evaluate for you. So it's basically three commands in one. It's a macro command. And so that's another example of a command. Now, how should we go about implementing our program? Now, if you've never written a lot of command line driven code or even code that's driven by menus and GUIs, you might not be familiar with what the issues are. But the thing you want to avoid is you want to avoid scattering the command objects and the command processing logic all over the place in your code. You want to come up with a canonical, uniform, consistent way of handling all the different user commands that's easy to understand and very easy to extend. Clearly, hard coding these things into your software using things like switch statements or if-else chains is going to be problematic because if you make changes over time to handle new requirements or new environments, then you're going to have a lot of rework done. So ideally, you'd like to be able to make it really easy to add in new commands and new command actions based on scripts or reading from a configuration file or whatnot. So what we're going to do to make this simple is we're going to define a hierarchy of user command impl classes. So there's going to be a, a base class called user command impl which has a method called execute, which of course is going to be defined as being pure virtual. And then we're going to go ahead and extend from user command impl to make different kinds of commands, like a format command, an expression or expert command, an eval command, a print command, a macro command, a quick command, and so on and so forth. And we'll do that just by subclassing from the base class and then overriding the execute method to do whatever that particular command requires. So to make this work, of course, we're going to have to have something in common. Every, every of these subclasses, every one of these derived classes will have a method called execute. And it'll also store any state. Each of the subclasses can store whatever state is necessary to do that particular command's bidding. And there's a couple different ways to do this. One way to do this is to have the command object implement the command itself. So in that case, the execute method does something. And that something would probably be defined as a as a method in the command. Conversely, we could also have the command 
forward to some other object. So the command, command's execute method wouldn't do the work directly. It would forward to some other object that does the work. And we're actually going to apply this variant in our case study expression tree processing app. We're going to have something called a tree context, and we're going to forward the commands to that. And you'll see when we get into the state pattern later why we do that. So how do we do this? We're going to define a, an abstract base class called user command impl, and it's going to define a couple of methods, execute and print valid commands. The most important method here for the purposes of the pattern is the execute method. And the execute method basically will do whatever the subclass or the derived class of user command impl wants to be done. So that's going to be subclass specific. And then print valid commands will be used to indicate what commands are valid at a given step. And that uses the, the state pattern, as we'll talk about later. So recall, we always want to evaluate our design from the point of view of scope, commonality, and variability analysis. And when we do that, we see that we've got a common API for all the commands. Every command has a method called execute, for example. And then we can support controlled variability. The name of the game here is controlled variability. And we do that by deriving from user command impl to then vary what the execute method or the print valid command methods actually do. And that way we can change those things in a very stylized way. 